Good Wednesday evening, everyone. I hope you're doing well out there. I hope you're having a great day. I uh, just want to invite you and, and say, uh, uh, please come join us uh, for our Wednesday night Bible study this evening, right here, right now. And uh, we are certainly glad that you have chosen to join with us. And as people are coming on, I just want to remind you, if you would, uh, if you would be so kind as to hit the like button and the share button, uh, so we can get into as many homes as possible. And so we thank you for doing that each and every time. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, some of these are, are church specific, uh, but uh, these are also certain ways you can be praying for us at New Hope Baptist Church as well. I wanted to just say a big thank you to all those that have been watching us on Facebook and have been uh, jumping on in here and, and joining us and being part of our worship and, and uh, Bible study time. Uh, we had a great time this past Sunday with our uh, first drive-in service. We had about 20 to 25 cars, uh, and most of those cars had multiple people in them. And We're going to be doing that again this week, and uh, we certainly want to invite you, if you're a church member or in the area, uh, we would love for you to come at uh, 11 o'clock. Uh, everybody stayed in their vehicles. Keep your windows rolled up, turn to 91.7 on your radio, and uh, we're out under the portico, and I'm preaching, and Brother Johnny and others are singing, and we're having a great time, and it's just like being at the drive-in in church at the same time. And so we're going to be doing that again this Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, unless it storms. It's not supposed to, but uh, even if it rains, we'll be doing it, because we can stay dry, and everybody's... Uh, safe in their vehicle. So I wanted to certainly mention that and invite you to that again. Uh, I want to remind our members about tithes and offerings. Uh, there's three ways to give. Uh, on Sundays, you can drive and drop. Uh, we have a member of the finance committee uh, that's uh, at the front door, and it worked out great this past Sunday. People were just able to drive up into the portico. They didn't even have to get out of their cars. So that's one convenient way. You can also use the old method of mailing it in to P.O. Box 293, Dyer, Tennessee, 38330. And then the other way, uh, you can get on our website at mynewhope.net, mynewhope.net. Click on the Give button, and you can give fast, easy, and secure, and it sends a receipt right to your email. I mean, just like that. So... Uh, but this Sunday, uh, we are taking up our offering, our special offering for Annie uh, Armstrong. Normally, we would have done this on Easter Sunday, uh, but because we didn't meet uh, physically uh, with everything going on, we're going to be taking that up this Sunday uh, along with our tithes and offerings. So I wanted to make mention of that as well. And then uh, I wanted to let you know, uh, I've been involved in some meetings this week, and I've got another one in the morning, and uh, we are uh, looking at everything coming down from the president, coming down from the governor of our state, uh, also working with the Tennessee Baptist Mission Board, and uh, we're looking at, at, at how we're going to effectively start getting back together to do it in the best way possible and the safest way possible. And so as we think about coming together again, I wanted to let you know that next week I'll be sharing some updates, some tangible updates with you on how we're going to make those processes happen uh, because it's not as easy as just showing up one Sunday uh, after we've been gone if we're going to do it properly and we're going to do it right because there, there are quite a few things that need to be taken into consideration as we get ready to come back together as these quarantines uh, drop off. So anyway, those are things to please be praying for uh, as we step through that process because we want to do it in a way that keeps people safe and in a way that honors the Lord as well. So pray for us and uh, as that time comes near. All right, well, with that being said, we're going to open up in a word of prayer and then I want to share uh, a brief word from the word with you tonight. So let's pray together. Dear Lord, I want to thank you for tonight. I want to thank you for, Lord, just another day, Lord, to live and to serve you. And Lord, I know that there are so many needs out there, Lord, that range, uh, Lord, from a minor cold, Lord, 
to those that have lost the loved ones this past week. And Lord, we just want to lift up every one of those needs to you tonight. And we pray in Jesus' name that you would meet each person at the point of those needs. Lord, we pray that, God, everything we say and everything we do would bring honor to you. Lord, I want to thank you, Lord. I got a great uh, report on Brother Danny Parker's mother late this afternoon, and we rejoice over good news on her condition. Lord, I pray uh, for Ross and Carlita Pierce as they celebrate their nine-year anniversary today, that you would uh, bless them in a special way. Lord, I pray for the the youth and the children out there and the parents that, Lord, they're struggling right now, being stuck at home and uh, not used to this. And, Lord, even in some families, Lord, it's probably bringing tension within the family. And I pray, God, that you would just turn those tensions into sweet times together. And so, Lord, I pray tonight as we open your word that you'd speak to our hearts. God, that you'd move us, that you'd make us more like you and less like us. And Lord, we just confess we need your word. We need you. And Lord, without you, we can't do anything worth doing. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good to see. I'm looking at my phone here, and I see some folks have joined with us, and I'm grateful for that. Uh, if you would, get your Bibles ready. We're going to be in multiple verses this evening. And before we went on this quarantine, and um, I was teaching a, a class in our discipleship training hour on uh, Sunday nights and uh, about prayer. And it, it had me thinking about some of those things. And, and I kind of wanted to bring a reminder tonight. Uh, this is not from the material we were using necessarily, but I want to talk to you about prayer tonight. Because, again, prayer is so important and it's essential that you and I as God's children that we be praying every day, that uh, we be in a constant state of prayer. You know, Paul talked about that, and, and he said that we were to pray continually, and that doesn't mean we know that we're supposed to be, that we're going to be on our knees 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But what it does mean is that we are in a mode of prayer. We are in a spirit of prayer at all times. And, and you know, I, I just want to talk about prayer tonight, and I want to give you uh, six quick reminders about prayer that I hope will be an encouragement to you. But, you know, first of all, I think we've got to remember, it doesn't matter if you, if you pray in King James English or some kind of contemporary uh, language, but God just desires that we pray uh, with a pure and a sincere heart. You know, and, and I think the best way to do that is to go back to to Psalm 46.10, where God said, Be still and know that I am God. And when we do that, when we, when, we, uh, when we get ourselves into that calm state where we are able to sit and we're able to be still and we are able to rest and understand that God is God and we are not, I think that's one of the first steps of getting into that state of having a pure and sincere heart and getting ready for prayer. Think about this, the disciples themselves, they observed the profound effect that prayer had in Jesus' life and ministry. In fact, they witnessed how Jesus would often go, to, uh, go off by himself and spend time in prayer with his Father in heaven. And, and it's a great example for us. They saw the, the power and, and peace and the tranquility that came from Jesus' life and and from his prayer life. And so this gave him the ability to stay calm in, in troubled circumstances. And it shows us the oneness that he had with his father. And, and you know, the life that's saturated in prayer is the life that has oneness and closeness with the father. I mean, Jesus' prayer life, it impressed these men so much that they asked him to teach them how to pray. In Luke 11, uh, it says this, and, and I just want you to, to catch this. It's, it's a little lengthy, but listen. Luke 11, verse 1 says, Now it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, 
that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Think about that. I mean, they could have asked Jesus to teach them anything. But they said, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. I mean, most definitely, if, if the Son of God saw how important prayer was and he took the time to pray, how much more important should it be for you and for me uh, mere men and women to take time and to pray and see it as a necessity and a priority in our lives. Prayer is so important because prayer is such an important ingredient to following Christ. And I want to just give you six things about prayer tonight that I hope will encourage you, that will move you and me to pray more. And so let's just kind of look at these. First of all, number one, prayer was modeled for us by Jesus. Number one, prayer was modeled for us by Jesus. Jesus took the time to show his followers how to pray. Here it is in Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 15. Look, he says, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your Father knows the things that you have need of before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy, your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us as we, our debts, as we forgive our debtors and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And I think, number one, this is it. I mean, Jesus modeled for us how to pray and and, and if Jesus took the time to model for us how to pray, then, then we know that it's important, right? Right. I mean, we know that it's an important ingredient to our spiritual life. I mean, prayer and this word right here are the two, uh, two of the greatest things that we have as weapons in this life because we're in a spiritual war. And, and, and these are our two greatest weapons against our enemy. All right, but here it is, number two. Prayer is not a solitary experience. I think sometimes we think it's a solitary experience, but it's really not a solitary experience. I mean, think about this. God has given us the Holy Spirit to aid us in prayer, even when we don't know what to pray. I mean, Romans 8 26 and 27. We'll look at that in just a minute. And I can't tell you how many times I've been on a hospital visit or at the, at the, at the side of a loved one that's passed away and the family is, is waiting on me to give some kind of encouraging words or, or something that would make them feel better. And, 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 and I've seen so many times where I've had nothing to say and the Spirit of God would just intervene and intercede on my behalf and, 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 and just by his mercy give those words to say and give those words to pray. And, and, and let me tell you, that's not something I could do on my own. It wasn't a solitary thing. It was the aid and the help of the Holy Spirit. In Romans 8, 26 and 27, Paul said, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know when we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself 
makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And so you see, when we pray, it's not a solitary experience. It's, it's, it's us and the Holy Spirit within us working together, Him aiding us. Yes. Number three, prayer allows us to voice our request to God. Prayer is how God allows us to voice our requests to Him. I mean, prayer is God's appointed way for us to communicate our concerns and to present our needs to Him. And I'm so grateful to be able to do that. I mean, to be able to voice those things to the creator, to the sustainer, to the giver of life. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for God creating me, making me, and sustaining the heartbeat and the blood flow and the, and the workings of, of the brain and the whole body. You know, and, and so here we have the fact that he allows us God allows us to communicate our request to Him. James chapter 4, James chapter 4, verse 2 and 3 says this, You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war. Yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Friend, I think, I think what he's teaching us here is, again, we're going back to that pure and sincere heart and that we actually have to ask, that we have to voice those requests to God. Yes. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. if, if somebody's sick, we ought to pray for them. We ought to ask God to heal them. And, and, and that's, that's right. you know, and, but we're asking for God's will to be done. And sometimes that means God's going to heal them on this earth. And sometimes that means for the child of God, the ultimate healing is going to come by them passing away from this earth, stepping into eternity, and being free from that ailment in heaven. Amen. But we need to ask. We need to ask. We need to let these requests be made known to God. If we don't ask, why should we expect to receive. That's right. Number four, prayer enables us to seek forgiveness. Prayer enables us to seek forgiveness. See, when we pray sincerely for forgiveness, God will hear our prayers and restore us. He'll hear our prayers and restore us. Now, I'm going to give you another verse out of James here. James chapter 5 Verse 15 and 16 says, And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Mm -hmm. See, it, it helps us to seek forgiveness. What did David pray in Psalm 51? Psalm 51 is a, is a, is a psalm, a prayer of David when he had, he had committed the sin of, uh, of adultery with Bathsheba. And then what did he do? It went further. He sent uh, her husband Uriah out to the, to the uh, uh, front line to be killed because he had gotten his wife pregnant. And so sin kept increasing and increasing and getting worse and worse. But, but after that, we see in Psalm 51, David, his brokenness, his broken heart, his broken spirit. And he prays those words and he says, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. He had a broken and contrite heart. And you see, prayer helps us to seek forgiveness from God. Number five, <clears throat> prayer.
Prayer helps us overcome worry. Any of you out there worry? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not seeing any amens come through. I'm not seeing any, <laughs> I'm not seeing any uh, thumbs up come through. But uh, <laughs> I think that you, like me, have been caught in times where we worry. Amen. Where we fret. Well, prayer helps us overcome worry. See, even in the midst of troubles, we can receive God's peace, but, but it comes through prayer. Now, I love what Paul wrote in Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, verses 5 through 7. He said, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And then listen to this. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Prayer helps us overcome worry. Well, we have to, we, we have to uh, kind of step through that again. Be anxious for nothing. Why? Why can we be, how can we get to that point? Well, he says, but in everything by prayer and supplication. So prayer and supplication, that's the way, that's the process by which we're handing it over to God. We're laying it down at his feet. And he says, with thanksgiving. See, we need to be thankful for what God's going to do in every circumstance of our life. Right. Let your requests be made known to God. So there it is again. We have to ask, just like James said, and now Paul's saying, let your request be made known unto God. And then what happens? And the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. But listen, when he says, and the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, I left out one little phrase there. It's the peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. See, it's so good. You can't even understand it. You can't even fathom it. You can't even take it all in. It's so good. It's God's peace. Not like the world, but like only He can give. And then number six. Hang in there. We're almost finished. Prayer increases our spiritual knowledge and maturity. Prayer increases our spiritual knowledge and maturity. See, God wants to give us greater spiritual understanding. I, I believe that. I believe you can't read the Word of God without seeing that God wants to make you more mature and more understanding in His Word. And He does that through prayer. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and understanding. See, prayer increases our spiritual knowledge and our understanding. And, and I believe as we get into this word right here, and we read this word, when you read part of God's word, you need to pray over that part of God's word. Amen. And you need to ask God to help you to understand it and to help you apply it to your life. I love what Adrian Rogers used to say. He said, he said, obey what you understand, and soon you'll understand the things you didn't understand. Understand? <laughs> I, I, I love that. I mean, but it's true. I mean, as you obey what you understand, God will increase your knowledge and your understanding so that you can understand more of the things that you previously didn't understand. And so, when you think about these six things, our prayer life as followers of Christ, I mean, it, it, it should have regularity, shouldn't it? It should have regularity. It should be regular. It should be constant. It should be a state of who we are. It should be without hindrance. And the way we have it without hindrance is we, we in, in the beginning of our prayer, we we make sure that we confess any sin that's in our life and, 
and, and, and we agree with God that that sin is sin, and we don't harbor that sin, we don't hide that sin, you can't hide it from God anyway. If you're a child of God, it's already under the blood, but you need to agree with God that you've sinned and confess it and repent. And so there needs to, uh, we need to have an expectance when we pray. I, you know, I, I think that we need to expect great things from God. We need to expect His will, but we need to, we need to pray with expectation. We, we don't need to just pray one thing and not believe God for those answers. That's right. And we need to trust God even when He doesn't answer the way we want Him to answer. But we need to pray with expectation. <clears throat> and listen, if you're not uh, a member of New Hope Baptist Church, I probably haven't had a chance to say this to you, but I'll say it to our church members, and I'll say it to you wherever you're going to church. When you go to church this coming Sunday, whether it's online or, or you go to a drive-in parking lot to listen or back when you're able to get back in your building and start having services again, when you go to church on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights and Wednesday nights and you go to Sunday school, you need to expect God to do something. Amen. Pray with expectation. Amen. Our prayers need to be effective. See, prayer can work powerfully and effectively in a crisis situation when, when God's people come together and join together and call upon the name of the Lord. You know what it, what's the Bible say? When two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. You know, we need to understand that, that, that there is power in prayer. And we've got, a, we've got a man in our church right now. His mother's in the hospital. She went by ambulance yesterday over in Jonesboro, Arkansas to the hospital and, and uh, said she had pneumonia. Her O2 stats were down. Uh, she couldn't hardly believe, breathe. There was fluid on her lungs. We began praying. We sent out a prayer chain yesterday afternoon and I got about an hour before coming here tonight, I got a call from him, and he said, Brother Brian, you're not going to believe it. And I said, what's going on? And, and Brother Danny said, listen, my mom's O2 stats are 94%. They drained a liter of fluid off of her lungs. There's no fever. She's breathing well, doing well. She might even get to go home tomorrow, and that's how great she's doing. She's 96 years old. Let me tell you, that's not a coincidence. I blame it on powerful prayer of the church coming together and praying. Amen. A prayer needs to be persistent. God honors faithful praying. And we need to be persistent in our prayer. So let me ask you this. Are, are you consistent in your prayer life? Are you strong in it? Where are you strong in your prayer life? Where are you weak in your prayer life? And then what will you begin doing to increase your strength in the areas that you're weak? That's a question for you. That's a question for me. That's a question for all who can hear. What will you begin to do to increase your strength in the weaker areas of your prayer life? And I'm going to tell you, I believe in the power of prayer because I believe in the God that we're praying to, Jehovah God, the God of this word right here. And I just want to encourage the church to be praying. Pray. Soon we'll be meeting together again uh, physically, but we need to pray for the work of the ministry to still continue. I mean, it's been continuing in a different way and in different manners, but we want the work of the ministry to keep going out. The spread of the gospel to keep going out. There's still lost people that need to be saved. There's still hurting people that need to be ministered to. There's still hungry people that need to be fed. There's still people that are deaf that need to be given the gospel. And, and so we have a, a work that still needs to go on. 
Even in the midst of a quarantine and a virus, the work of the gospel can't stop. It has to go on. And so I encourage you to pray and be praying with me that we would continue to stay strong in that area and keep as many ministries going as we can, even in the midst of all of this. Well, let me pray for you. And then I want to encourage you, don't forget tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, Brother Joe will be on here bringing our youth message for the evening. No matter your age, though, you can tune on in. It's always a great message with Brother Joe. So let me pray for you, and I look forward to, to seeing you again this coming Sunday as well. Father, thank you again for tonight. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us the tool to pray. Lord, that we can communicate with you. And Lord, I pray tonight that, Lord, we would be a praying church, a praying people. But Lord, I pray that we would not pray um, without faith. I pray, God, we, would, we wouldn't be tossed to and fro like James talked about, but Lord, that we would pray with faith, not wavering, asking and trusting you. So, Lord, tonight, I, I pray for those that are sick, that you would heal them. Oh, Lord, I pray for those out there that are lost, that need to hear the good news of the gospel. I pray that, Lord, you would send us and put those people in our way so we can share with them. Lord, I pray for those that have heard the gospel time and time again, Lord, and their heart, hearts have gotten hardened to it. And, Lord, time and time again, they've said, no, Lord, I pray for those people that you would soften their hearts and, God, that they would, Lord, hear the gospel and take it in and say yes to Jesus. Oh, Lord, I pray that you would help us to be a church that would trust you, follow you, obey you, and glorify you in everything we do. God, we ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus, for it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, I want to thank you for being with us tonight. Look forward to seeing you again. God bless. Love you all.